All right, <clears throat> so today we're doing assemblies, and so now is the time, I mean last week it was kind of important to have your project, this week if you don't have your products up correctly, it's not going to be fun, you're going to have problems, so make sure that you're doing your projects, you're copying the whole folder with all the stuff intact. Uh, so today we're going to do the demo here. So we want to always keep that whole folder together, because in that folder, we have all of our parts and our project file. So we want to be able to keep this all together. So now our assembly is going to go in here also. Our drawing that we did done before will go in here. And it has to stay in that project, and you have to activate the project in order for it to be able to find everything. So you always want to make sure that you're act opening the project and activating it before you start doing anything. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go to new. And now I'm going to do standard projects, or standard assembly. And say OK. It's going to open it up. There's not going to be anything here. Ta da. Nothing. What do you think it wants me to do? Place your object. Yeah, it wants me to tell it what to put in the assembly. So I'm going to go over here to place. And I want to pick one of these parts. So there's my parts. I've got a little base, a knob, a little thing on the side, and a little bracket thing for some sides of that. <clears throat> so usually the first thing you want to put in the base or in your assembly is your biggest thing. Um, also whatever you put in first is going to be locked into position. So this is where when you draw it on your parts, how you orientate it matters because whichever one you bring in here, it's going to be locked in that position. So you want something that's in the correct position. Um, so I'm just going to pick this base. It's a good thing to start with. I'm going to open. It's going to bring it in. And if I move my mouse, you can see it's wanting me to add other ones like it. You know, a lot of times you'll do an assembly and you'll do more than one part that's the same in it. I don't want it, so you hit escape, and it's out. You can see over here on the browser, it's got a little push pin through it. That's telling me that that part's there and it's locked or grounded. You can unground it. If you want to reorientate it to the planes, but unless you have a real good reason for doing that, I would recommend against it. I like to bring that in, draw it correctly so when I bring it in, it's grounded, I don't have to touch it. <coughs> so now I'll go to place and find my next piece. So I kind of like to work biggest to smallest pieces. Um, also, when you do your build material for your drawings, it's going to go in this order also. So you kind of think ahead to that way also, because that usually wants to be biggest to smallest also. So I'll pick up the next piece and bring it in. There you go. Put it in. Still wants me to do more. Hit escape, and I'm out of it. And that's turn this around the right way. How it came in. So if I pick on this piece, I can move it around. This piece, try and move it, it says no. You can't. So what do you think I want to do right now? I want to line those up so constrain it, right? So in sketches we use constraints to line up the geometry. We're going to use constraints again here to put it together. So I'm going to go constrain right here. <clears throat> and so it's going to ask me what kind of constraint do I want. This first one is mate, and so it'll line two surfaces up with each other. It'll make them parallel to each other. 
and I can give it an offset so if I want a space between those surfaces. This button right here will kind of measure what the current distance is and tell me what that is. So if I pick that one and that one, it's going to tell me what that current distance is. If I leave that unchecked, it's automatically going to go to zero. You can see right now it's got that same distance. If I call it zero, now it's down on top of it. Also here, I can tell, do I want those surfaces to oppose each other? Or do I want them to be flush with each other? See what it did? So sometimes you want to take surfaces and line them up flush, so they're facing the same direction. Well, other times you want them to oppose each other and be mated. So I'll go back to mate. <clears throat> this one here is if you want an angle, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Tangent or insert. So I'm just going to say OK. Or if I say OK, what's going to do is it's going to get me out of here. If I hit apply, it's going to save it. And now it's ready for me to do the next one. So now I can pick on that face and that face. And because I have preview on it, it automatically flip over to flush. I'm going to take preview off. I got zero. Apply. That face. That face. Now I'll say OK. Now this one is fully constrained. You can see it gives me that little circle with a line through it. The little can't do it thing. Because it's fully constrained to that piece which is grounded. Okay? Questions? Right, does there, are you got is the computers up now? Yeah. Alright, let me just do the the next two pieces and then I'll let you guys have at it. I'm going to place again. I'm going to put the knob in. So how do those want to line up? The knob goes in there. Oops. If you actually put in another one, just go to the browser and delete it. So now I'm going to go to constraint again. So which way, which one of these should I use? Tangent? Insert. There's a something tangent? Use the insert one. Yeah, insert would be a good one. That's two little cylinders. Also, I could use mate. Watch what happens if I use mate on this. I pick the round part. What's it picking? It's picking the axis, right? So I could pick that and the axis there, right? And now I can move it in and out, but it's not on the surface. And then I could make the two, that surface, and that surface together, right? The insert one, if I pick the surface, if I pick those edges, like that's all it wants me to do is pick a circular edge. I can't pick anything else. And it gives me that little arrow. That's telling me which way it's pointing, and that has to do with over here for doing the mate or the flush. So if I pick that, and I pick that, now I can tell it how far apart, how far apart I want those two cylinder, those two edges to be. So I can tell it one inch. And now there's one inch between that circular reference and that circular reference. So that controls both the the line of the axis and the spacing. <clears throat> so a lot of times when you have two cylinders or holes or holes of bolts, stuff you want to line up, insert's the best way. So I'll tell that to be zero. Now that can turn. Can't move out, but it can turn. 
So what do I need now? What? What's that? No, but that's still moving. If I go to view and I click on degrees of freedom, it'll show me where everything's not constrained. So right now, see it's got this little thing here showing me that that can rotate. So we want to make it so that everything is constrained, just like on a sketch. So how can I constrain that so it can't move? Grounded. No. Only the bottom piece is grounded. Could you set it so that that slot has to stay parallel to the opposite edge? Yeah, so I can go to constrain, use an angle, right? Now I'll pick on that surface and that surface. And I'll go back over to this directed angle. So that's the one I like to use the most often, is this first one. It's for two, through two things and it gives you a, a nice angle. These other ones are for other cases um, when you got weird angles and things. I almost always, when I use angle, use that one. Or, Always. Or I can do it at 45. So a lot of times on drawings you want to have like bolts at the 45 degree. Um, so I'll say okay. I'm going to put in this plate. So first one, insert. There to there. Line. Should I use an insert on the second one also? I need this. I need this whole lineup, right? Should I use an insert on that one also? No. I don't see why it flip all the way around. If I go to constraint, should I use insert there? There? You could, but what is the purpose? Well, I need to make a line up with the hole, right? But when you line up in the way that you line the first one? No, because now it can rotate. So if you insert both of them, you just constrain them both at the same time? I, I can only do one constraint at a time. So, <clears throat> should I use the insert constraint here? No. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's try that. Let's do that. I just did, right? Insert there, there. Okay. Now what happens if I want this to be a gap in there? Get out of the I'll go back to this one. So I can click on the plate, go to that insert, make it a quarter inch, and it gives me a problem. Why won't it move that to a quarter inch? Yeah, because that's without zero, right? So what's a better way to do that? Yeah. So on this one, so if you got things being lined up into two holes, use insert on one, and just use a mate with the axis on the second one, because that'll make it line up. But now your distance is controlled by your, your uh, by the insert. It's true, but insert or the mate. It's controlled by the insert. Because insert has a distance. Mate just makes sure that the axis line up with each other. And you can see if I change the value, over here the browser tells me what the value is. And then down here is where I can change it. So if I just click on it in the browser, I can go down here and change any of those distances. Bring that back in. So go ahead and do that.